Welcome back to Cairn Creek, guys. Thanks for coming back for another episode here in Southern Ohio. I feel like we're finally gonna get to do something exciting, finally. I feel like the last several episodes have just been monotonous, tiresome, boring stuff. But in this episode, we're gonna tear out some concrete. We've got this huge track over. We're gonna run inside this building, tear out the floor, redo some plumbing, and pour some spectacular new concrete. Cairn Creek 2.0. Let's go. Enter the world's biggest track -o. We're gonna go in beast mode. Evening two of this video. We started last night demoing this floor. I dug late into the night getting this grade corrected because the grade was like a motocross ramp. Obviously, you can see I'm starting on plumbing now. Very, very simple plumbing setup. I'll go over that once I get some more done. But for now, uh, once again, burning the midnight oil, if I guess to speak. Super fortunate that we can do our own plumbing in house. Obviously, to save some money. Definitely a hoot owl up in those woods. Maybe it's Hootie. You guys remember Hootie? All right, I think I'm good for the night. I want to go over what we got here. This is coming in from the carport area. Lean to, I call it. This will be a washer and dryer stackable here in the corner. There'll be a hallway down through here. Go into the hallway. Like we're, the first time we're walking in the hallway, this is the hallway. Dewalt light. Kitchen sink. Like I said, pretty simple setup on this plumbing. All my water supplies will come from up above, will drop down. Keep them, I just don't like, well, I put them underground sometimes, but I'd rather not. So that's what we'll do with the supply lines, hot and cold. I was hesitant about what I would use to get this gravel inside this building. It took about 16 tons so far. I went to the rental store and got this little, it's called a Dingo. These things are very, very handy. It's uh, was a questionable decision before I went and got it, but now I know it was 100% the right call. Well, here you go. Next time you see this area, it's going to be pouring collared concrete with a textured finish. Concrete at 2.0 is going to be fantastic. Let's go. Putting that collar in the concrete, you really got to let it mix a long time to get that collar consistency all through the concrete. That's what we're doing right now. It's been going for about 10 minutes, probably going another 10 five to ten minutes to get that concrete really thorough. Terrible job. 
Definitely a messy job, but we put that powder on for two reasons. One reason, so it don't stick to the stamps. I, I had a terrible time with the sticking to the stamps. It was just, it was too, the surface too wet. I probably should have put cow cement, that's besides the point. And reason number two is because it adds color. So that powder imprints, it's like an ink, and it, it doesn't consistently stick in the concrete below it. This concrete, when it's complete, it should have two tones. It should have the base color, and then this powder is also gonna give another color. And you really see that once we power wash it and seal it. It'll bring those colors out, and you'll see what I mean then. But that's the two main reasons we use this messy powder. I mean, it's like baby powder, probably finer. It's a cloud, as you can see. So that's it for this day. It's Cruzy's birthday, and we're having a party across the street, so I need the bus tail to get over there. Guys, we'll see you in the morning. We're back at it Monday evening. We tried to come over and work on this floor yesterday on Sunday. We poured it Saturday. Entirely still too soft to power wash. When you just saw me stamping that, I didn't have a mask on. Well, that was for the first few seconds. I definitely quickly realized I need a mask. And then you saw when I was done that I had the mask marks because I went over to Cruzy's birthday party and everybody's like, oh my gosh, you got mask hair on, blah, blah, blah. It's a hot mess like I always am. Come on. Let's go in there and start power washing this floor and see what it looks like. You want the good news or you want the bad news? Well, the good news is things are moving along quite nicely. The bad news is we had some troubles with our camera and we missed a bunch of footage. So in pure wreck at JSF fashion, we're gonna to try to rectify the situation, bring you back up to speed, show you what we've got done since we've done that concrete floor. So let's take you a tour and catch you up. From the front side, we got some more concrete poured. We got a little stoop here and we got the pretty little lean-to area all done. We've done a nice curb on that. On the back side, that's all gonna drain water quite nicely. Windows are all in, let's go inside. Earlier in the video, I said we're going through the hallway. Well, this is kind of the hallway it's gonna be. We got the bathroom here on our right side. New stairs going up to the top. Now these stairs are probably temporary. They're construction temporary stairs I consider because I'd like to do some uh, rough cut, live edge type stairs on the wood miser. Don't you agree? As we mosey to the left, that'll be a little bedroom. I think it's 11 by 12. Just a small bedroom, which we've got a really small footprint, let me tell you. This little corner will be the kitchen area. Lots of sun coming in to the back patio and hot tub. I've got this conduit stubbed up. That's gonna be for an island in this little kitchen area. Small living room area, but I think we can compensate a little bit upstairs by having another little seating area upstairs. Very small footprint, I've said that before on this floor plan here at Cane Creek 2.0. It's, uh, it's just a small building, but that's okay. Our goals for what we're doing, I think it's gonna work good. I think we can still sleep comfortably, uh, maybe six people. Uh, as we move forward, we'll be able to address that a little bit better. Things are looking good. I'm about done with all the downstairs. Actually, I am done with the downstairs framing. Now I gotta move upstairs, do some framing for a bathroom up there, a couple small walls. Trying to bust tail to get ready for plumbing and electrical because our spray foam guys are coming here in two weeks. So we've got to get everything done for the spray foam guys because once they spray foam, it kind of shuts you out of any work on that exterior, especially the exterior, I should say. Interior walls, you can still work. And once we get the spray foam down, we can go ahead and get the heating and cooling guys in here and get some heating in this building here in the winter because it's really, really cold. Obviously, we're working through it, getting things done. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's just been boring content, kind of. And what I'm doing here right now, it's just... It's the same thing over and over. Not a lot of good stuff going on. However, we are close to getting the wood miser out. Definitely gonna record, hit the record button on that daggone thing because I'm so excited to run the wood miser. It's been almost since June since I fired it up. I would like to take the next episode though to address some questions. I know you guys have some questions. So if you've made it this far in this video, I know you are a Cairn Creek fan. So please leave us a question down in the comment section and I'll do a video on the next episode of just sitting down answering some questions. Maybe some good stuff to be told. I don't know, ask any questions. It'll be a good conversation piece to sit in front of the camera and talk and give you another update over here because that's where we're going. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for working with us. Cannon Creek, over and out. Can't right, pull up to the right town. <laughs> Go and you do it because if, if the car breaks, it can tell me you're What? <laughs> you're the one who parked it here. Buddy, you're the one that just gave me a stuck right there. Actually, no, I just tried to back up. Good on the grass, boy.